Hi everybody, it's Samantha. From eternal sleepiness to constant annoyance, here are signs that you might be suffering from depression and don't even know it. Number 13. What is depression? First things first, to determine whether or not you might be experiencing depression, it's important to know what this illness is. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, depression is also a major depressive disorder, and clinical depression is a common but serious mood disorder. It affects just about every aspect of a person's life, from the mental to the physical. But many people go undiagnosed and may not be aware that they have this illness. It's also important to remember that there are various types of depression. One form is postpartum depression, which takes place during pregnancy and after a woman gives birth and the symptoms are severe. Another kind is persistent depressive disorder, which lasts for a minimum of two years and is characterized by periods of serious depression and times where symptoms are milder. Other forms of depression include psychotic depression, bipolar disorder, and seasonal affective disorder. Studies suggest that women are two times as likely to experience depression than men. But no matter what gender you are, there are numerous effective treatments available. So if you think you might be experiencing depression, don't wait to seek help. Number 12, menstrual changes. About 20% of women will experience major major depression sometime in their lives, according to an article by Dr. Ellen W. Freeman. So it's not too surprising that depression can affect your menstrual cycle, and your cycle can affect your mood. In women, this illness is often connected to changing reproductive hormones. One of the most common forms of depressive disorders is PMS, and there are severe types to this as well. So yes guys, PMS is a real thing. In addition to depression from hormonal changes, this mood disorder can also change your period completely. If you are depressed and your stress levels are rising, then your body releases more cortisol, which prevents your brain from sending the signal for you to ovulate. This can result in a late period or the absence of a period. If you've experienced a delayed cycle or none at all, and you've ruled out pregnancy, then it's probably best to speak with your doctor, whether or not it results in a depression diagnosis. Number 11, weight changes. One typical symptom of depression that you might not notice is a change in your appetite or weight, or probably both. An article from the Psychiatry and Behavioral Health Learning Network states that changes in appetite happen in about 50% of people that have depression. But these differences occur on both sides of the spectrum, making it difficult to determine whether or not it's a symptom of this mood disorder. Sometimes a person's appetite will increase with depression, resulting in weight gain if it continues over long periods of time. Other times, their appetite will decrease, causing weight loss. The majority of those suffering from this disorder will experience the latter and people who notice the former often have atypical depression. This means that their moods can get better during positive events, according to Mayo Clinic. If eating makes them temporarily happy, then it's easy to see why weight gain would be a symptom. Number 10, fatigue. Another telltale sign of depression that might not be very obvious is fatigue. But an essential part of understanding the symptoms is being able to differentiate between tiredness and fatigue. Being tired is a normal part of life. You might not be getting enough sleep, working too much, or studying for tests late at night. And these things are fairly simple to remedy, but eliminating your intake of caffeine about six hours before bedtime, avoiding alcohol consumption, not looking at your phone, tablet, television, or laptop approximately two hours before bed, exercising to reduce stress, and maintaining a clean and comfortable bed, you stand a great chance at getting a better night's sleep. Chronic fatigue isn't as simple as that, and its symptoms are much more serious. They include a sore throat, muscle pain, trouble concentrating, memory loss, headaches, enlarged lymph nodes, and sleep that just doesn't make you feel refreshed. People with depression often have fatigue, and those with chronic fatigue are at a higher risk of developing depression. Two types of sleep troubles in people with depression are insomnia and hypersomnia. The former means it's hard to fall or stay asleep, whereas the latter means excessive sleep. Number nine, headaches. Depression affects just about every part of the body, and since it's a mental disorder, it starts in the brain. It's not shocking that headaches are a common and overlooked symptom. People with headache disorder can experience depression because of that disorder. It can also be the other way around. Depression can also make headache disorder worse, where symptoms become more severe and more frequent. If you experience migraines, then there's also a chance that you have or could develop depression. These headaches cause severe pulsing or throbbing pain and can result in weakness, nausea, and light sensitivity as well. About 40% of people that get migraines also suffer from depression. Number eight, aches and pains. Not only can depression hurt your head, but it can also affect other parts of your body that you might not have guessed. Sometimes depression can manifest in physical pain, including muscle aches, trembling, chest pain, and hot flashes. A study done by Dr. Keeley from the University of Colorado Health Sciences Center on 200 people who were ultimately diagnosed with depression suggested that the physical symptoms of the disorder are often misdiagnosed. They further noted that patients experiencing the signs generally don't believe they're depressed. The doctor also reported that patients who were diagnosed based on their psychological symptoms were four times more likely to continue taking prescribed antidepressants for 
six months than the people who are diagnosed because of physical issues. The problem with this is that it takes about a half a year to nine months for the medication to prevent persistent depression. Number seven, anxiety. As if one condition wasn't enough to live with, it's fairly common for someone with depression to have anxiety and vice versa. Studies suggest that 10 to 20% of adults will make an appointment with their doctors for depression or anxiety once a year. About 50% of those people experience both disorders. Unfortunately, having one condition can make the other ones worse, and it's always best to seek medical help for either. But many people who have anxiety might not realize that they're depressed as well, or they may be mistaking their depression for anxiety. Since nervousness, trouble sleeping, and concentrating, and irritability are symptoms of both, it's easy to see why self-diagnosis would be difficult. Number six, irritable. As we briefly mentioned before, irritability is a symptom of depression. Since this illness is most often associated with sadness, feeling hopeless or helpless, and just generally feeling down, the anger and irritability that surface are often overlooked. Despite what most people believe, lashing out and being angry might indicate a more severe case of depression. Number five, digestion issues. Although many of the signs are emotional, there are plenty of physical symptoms, as we discussed before, and depression can have a significant impact on your digestive system. If you've experienced any sort of stomach problems, then you know that they're difficult to deal with. Depression can result in diarrhea, nausea, and constipation. General stomach pain is also a sign that you should pay attention to. According to an article from Harvard Medical School, there is a strong connection between your brain and the gut, and the brain has a direct effect on the stomach and intestines. Something that most people don't realize, however, is that the link goes both ways. The brain sends signals to the digestive system, and the gut can send signals to the brain. So if you're experiencing any issues in the bathroom, then it's a good idea to see your doctor and discuss your physical and mental health. Number four, guilt. This is one of the most significant symptoms of depression, and it can be debilitating for those who experience it. Blaming oneself is something that most people do when they have depression or other mental disorders. The reason for this could be because depressed people often overgeneralize things. An example would be if somebody loses a contest, then believes they're a complete failure because of it. They take a specific instance and turn it into a much larger problem. This overgeneralization is also the reason depressed people feel guilty for everything, even things that aren't their fault or have nothing to do with them. But people with depression often feel guilty for being depressed at all. They'll often tell themselves that they have nothing to be depressed about, but it doesn't change the way they feel. It's critical to realize that there isn't a specific cause for depression, and it can happen to anybody. Unfortunately, those suffering from this disorder feel like a burden to others because of it, and that makes them feel even worse and deepens their guilt. If you're feeling this way, then it's important to try and understand that it isn't your fault. It's also essential to seek treatment. Number three, disinterest. One of the most common symptoms of depression is anhedonia, or the loss of interest in various things. People with depression often find it difficult to enjoy doing just about anything. This not only includes hobbies that they used to love, but it also includes things essential for surviving like eating. Plus, disinterest also happens in one's romantic life as well. This can result in other issues like weight loss or problems with your partner. Opposed to common belief, depression doesn't equal complete disinterest. It's more likely that the brain's pleasure circuits aren't entirely shut down. According to Psychology Today, anhedonia might result from the inability to preserve positive feelings for a long time. So people with depression can experience pleasure, but it only lasts for a short period, which is why they're unable to fully enjoy the good things life has to offer. Number two, helplessness. The term learned helplessness was created by Martin Seligman after researching the subject in 1967. It is a behavior that people pick up after dealing with negative things repeatedly. After experiencing one adverse event after another for long periods of time, a person will sometimes accept that they are powerless or unable to help themselves. Major ties have been made between learned helplessness and depression in laboratory animals and similar connections have been made in middle-aged people and young adults. Although somebody who has developed learned helplessness thinks there is nothing they can do to remedy certain situations, they are mistaken. Unfortunately, if the person also has depression, then it's more difficult to recognize this and change it, and oftentimes, depression can result from this hopeless feeling. But it's essential to keep in mind that both of these problems can be mended. There are numerous treatments for depression, and learned helplessness can be resisted in one's own mind. So Lingman noted that arguing against these pessimistic thoughts and discovering skills that all people possess can help people overcome the helpless feeling. And now for our number one, don't forget to subscribe. Number one, intrusive thoughts. There are numerous types of intrusive thoughts. Sometimes these can happen on their own without the presence of another disorder, but a lot of the time they are the result of things like anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, and depression. One type of intrusive thought is when you can't stop thinking about whether or not you remember to do something and could be as simple as turning off the light. You might also begin thinking that someone you care about is going to get hurt. One common kind of intrusive thought for people with depression is wanting to harm themselves. During episodes of severe guilt, hopelessness, and feeling helpless, the thought can easily pop into someone's head, especially if they have depression. These thoughts are alarming and can convince you that it's something you truly desire. 
but it's critical to seek attention during these moments and do your best to realize they're only thoughts. These could come at any time and for no reason, and we often form attachments to them because they're so different than our regular thoughts. You could be driving and want to purposely crash, jump off of a high structure, or punch a brick wall. There are also times where you might want to injure somebody else or wish adverse things upon them. Both powerlessness and anger can bring those about, and it's not uncommon. But if you're experiencing either of these things or intrusive thoughts in general, it's important to address it with a doctor or therapist. Today's featured comment comes from LM on our Things You Didn't Know About Khloe Kardashian video. Thanks for your comment, LM. Don't forget to leave your thoughts below, and we might feature you in a future video. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.